So first up, we have David Gardner. He's a co-founder of The Motley Fool. And he just got <laughs> stiff-armed by Diana. <laughs> okay, stand up here. <laughs> Come on up. Come on up. There's an All intro right. involved. <laughs> <laughs> Together with his brother, David and Tom created, like I said, the world's greatest investing community. They've also authored dozens, a dozen at least, books that have helped millions of people take control of their lives, financial lives, and learn how to invest Foolishly with a capital F. If you guys aren't used to hearing us talk about foolishly in a positive light, you will get used to it by the end of the evening. So you've already welcomed him, but I guess you can welcome him again, David Gardner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ten minutes. Okay. Ready, set. I set my my second favorite app on my iPhone, the clock app. Ready, set, go. Um, so I have two stories that I want to tell tonight, and then in between I'm going to highlight my three points that are true of both stories, and I'll just start with the first one right away. And this is a, a story that I heard from my good friend Tom Gardner um, after he had been to a local watering hole. Uh, this The year was probably 1995, um, and it was uh, Tom just hiked up to a bar at the time after work, and a gentleman comes, uh, sidles up next to him, six foot five, dressed from head to foot in leather, maybe one of those bars, not sure, Tom. Uh, six foot five, head to foot in le uh, yeah, head to foot in leather. And Tom's like, hey, what do you do? He's like, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Harley guy. So uh, I, there's an annual ride on the Capitol. And so uh, I you know, took my motorcycle, my guys, and we're all here. We do this every year. It's this weekend. And... Uh, what do you do? Tom says, well, I started this thing called The Motley Fool, and we, you know, we're here to help the world invest better. And the uh, guy goes, oh, stock, stock, stock market? And, and Tom said, yeah. He said, oh, stock market, uh, great big gambling machine. And Tom's like, well, that's not really how we think about it. He's like, well, let me tell you my story. He said, uh, you know, the year was like 1988. I'd heard that the market had crashed the year before. And so uh, I uh, you know, had $5,000 saved at the time. So I gave it to uh, a broker, put me in a stock at $5 a share, so 1,000 shares. And he said, again, this is about 10 years later, so still follow the stock. And uh, you guys know what the pink sheets are? Um, and for investors here, you'll know pink sheets probably not a legit company or a company that did that well over 10 years because it doesn't qualify for listing on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. It's down in the pink sheets with a really long ticker symbol. And uh, so, you know, Tom's like, well, what, what, what was it? And he guy said, I don't know the business really, like it's breakfast in the southeast or something, not quite sure. Um, uh, so $5 a share, it's down at 25 cents a share now. So now you can see why I think the stock market is a great big gambling machine. And Tom said, well, uh, did you ever think, uh, you know, motorcycles? Did you ever think of investing in, in Harley? And the guy's like, no, you, you could invest in Harley? <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a public company. That means you, as a member of the general public, can be a part owner of Harley Davidson. Now, this is a guy who every day rode on a Harley surrounded by other people riding Harleys. When it came to investing in his own life savings at the time, his timing had been good. He put it in something, he put it with somebody that he didn't know, who put him in something that he didn't understand. And probably there was a sales and transactional motivation implicit in that advice. And after nine or 10 years of just sitting there thinking that's what the stock market is, that's what investing is. He had concluded it's a great big gambling machine. Well, if it really were a great big gambling machine, the annualized return of the stock market would be negative. The only reason there are gambling machines is because somebody owns that machine and is probably taking at a real minimum 2 to 3% if it's a slot machine or if it's a state lottery, 50% right out of your money and uh, it would be a great big gambling machine. Who won? It would feel like winning the lottery. Here's the great news. I know a lot of you already know this here tonight, and you might have brought somebody who doesn't know that, this here tonight. 
The stock market has averaged about a 10% gain over the last century per year. When you own stocks, you are the house. It's a better deal than what Las Vegas gets. And yet, because of mass ignorance and fear and human nature, which causes us to make all the headlines negative and live in fear of things, we've kind of misallocated our time and our money. We've given it away to people who don't really serve us. And at the end, we feel disconnected. And we have to come together in a setting like this one with a community of fellow fools to realize how crazy that is, that the world could have played out like that these last 50 to 100 years or so. So good news. When you're, when you're a stock market investor, the wind is at your back. And most of the real wealth that's created in this country, and it's in this room tonight, some of it, is because you embraced, you leaned in, you understood that being a part owner of businesses is, is the greatest, surest, most wonderful way to true wealth over the course of a lifetime. So now my three simple principles. Uh, these are three of seven. If you want to get the other four, you have to join Motley Fool Stock Advisor. <laughs> The stock, advisor, the stock Advisor Way, which is a kind of introductory document to anybody who joins our service, has the seven principles, but with only um, five minutes left, I'll just present three real quick um, in order. Uh, number one, number two, number three, businesses, not tickers. That's number one. So we're all about businesses. I, in fact, sometimes I've said in recent years, I wish the word stock had never been invented because it causes people to disconnect from what investing really is. Investing is taking a part ownership in a great business and letting it grow and flower over time and reaping the rewards of that. People who get carried away with what the ticker symbol is or what it did last week or looking at charts or it's all numbers in their head, it has nothing to do with business, that is absolutely opposite everything that we stand for and believe in at the Molly Fool. These are businesses. Number two, be a lifetime investor. If you want to add a lot of risk to your investment approach, it isn't that you should buy risky stocks, so-called. If you really want to add a lot of risk to your investment approach, be as hyper short-term as possible. Score yourself over the next month when your options expire, or tomorrow if, if you're a day trader, or just the next year scrutinizing your money manager. If you play that short-term game, you're welcoming risk into your life. And I don't want to do that. Um, my secret as an investor is to, to buy the risky looking companies, I won't go into that right now, but to hold them for a long, long time. So if you truly are a lifetime investor, I see some young faces here tonight, if you get it and you've gotten it and you have 100 years ahead of you, you are totally embracing the right mentality. Now most of us don't have 100 years here. I'm looking around the room, I'm looking at myself. But, uh, but the truth is, whether it's for you or your kids or your grandkids, be a lifetime investor. Number three, diversify. Diversify. Don't make it about one stock, one trend, one basket of stocks or mutual fund. Get from zero to 15, as we say to our new members, zero to 15 as fast as possible. Uh, cars can do it these days, zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. You should get from zero stocks to 15 stocks in, in weeks or months or days if possible, get diversified. Don't over diversify, don't go crazy owning 29 different mutual funds and then you have your 78 stocks. I mean, if you have that much money or you wanna do that and you enjoy that, I won't dissuade you from it, but most people are not diversified enough. And so those are three simple principles. And if you look back to our Harley guy, you'll see he didn't have any sense of business. He was just thinking about a ticker symbol that had underperformed dramatically. It had gone from $5,000 in value down to $250 in value over the course of those 10 years. Had he bought Harley, by the way, that $5,000 would have been $500,000 the day that we talked to him, because Harley was up 100 times over those 10 years from 1988 to 1997. And I submit to you, he would have had a much different idea about what the stock market was and what it was for. <laughs> All right, now I'll close with um, my, my other favorite story. This one is very much more about women. Harley's story is kind of a guy's story. So let's, let's talk a little bit about Tom and 
Tom's in my appearance on the television show, The View, uh, <laughs> July 2nd of 1998. So we were invited to, uh, to be on The View. Uh, Lisa Ling was a young, new co-host at the time, and they decided that what they would do is get Lisa investing and make it kind of fun and get the show's viewers thinking about stocks. And so they said, well, let's have the Motley Fools. They'll come in and you know, pick a stock for Lisa, and Lisa will buy a stock, and that's what we'll do. So that's what happened. Uh, we went on the show, July 2nd, 1998. We said the stock, um, and you know, it all felt great. We'd done our pre-interview, everything. Everyone loved the idea. We had fun with Lisa. It was a good show. Um, six weeks later, so August 16th of 1998, the stock had lost 33% of its value. <laughs> six weeks. Six weeks. You go on national TV with Lisa Ling as the expert and watch your stock go down a third in value in less than two months. So they had us back on The, the View <laughs> on that day, August 16th, 1998. I'll steal a little bit of my ending by saying that was the last time the Molly Fools had been on The View. <laughs> so... Um, Hey, everybody, live studio audience, just like tonight. Hey, everybody, the Motley Fool's here. Woo! Um, they, you know, they picked a stock for Lisa six weeks ago. Woo! It's down, though. Boo. A friend of mine who sometimes watches The View says, I think you guys were the only guys ever to be booed on The View. <laughs> they don't boo on The View. We were roundly booed. And uh, so... I, of course, I, I'm always going to have the aftermath, and I'm only telling the story because the ending is so awesome and capital F foolish, but uh, that, was, that was kind of our, our appearance on The View. You know, sorry. We, we still believe in it. You know, we were saying investing is not about six weeks. It's more about six years. The stock, Starbucks. <laughs> the day we picked it here, it was about to go here, here was $5.01 a share. You could have had it 33% cheaper, but if you just picked it there and held it. My favorite stock advisor intro that I wrote in 2013 was a year ago this month. I up to, updated the story. Don't know if Lisa held, but stock advisor on that day, the day I wrote, January 14th, 2013, closed it not $5.01, but literally exactly $55.01. So it was up 998%. The S&P 500, by comparison, over the exact same period was up 70%. Uh, so it was a 10-bagger if you obeyed the principles that I just talked about, if you thought about the business and where the world's headed, if you made it a lifetime kind of a thing, not six weeks. And finally, if you diversified, if you didn't just make it all about one stock if that stock didn't do too well for you. Happy to close by updating the story one more time. Here we are in January 2014. Starbucks closed at $76 and I think 11 cents today. So up another 40% over the last year. It's been a great stock market, it's been a great year. I know a lot of us are here with smiles as we think about the stock market because that's been that way the last three years. Um, but you know that stock is now up 40% more which turns it from a 10 bagger to a 15 bagger because that's part of the magic of compounding returns. This goes up another 40% and that's five times more our initial money with the S&P up about 20, 25% more. So I'm excited about tonight. I'm really pleased to have gotten the privilege of addressing you all. And thank you all for joining a gathering of fools. And up next is, thank you, um, a colleague, Lou, the real star of the show.